any kind of organization uh, that is doing anything remotely useful or interesting needs to be able to control the information about what they're doing, right? And, oh, geez, I've done the, the mistake. All right, well, we'll just, we'll have a, we'll have a reorg of the presentation. Um, and so the point is that we actually need private coordination, but that hasn't happened yet. So as an example, um, in the last uh, cycle, we saw Constitution DAO. I thought that was very funny and cool, but you know, it turns out that if you're fundraising for an auction and the total max bid is like right there on Ethereum, then like Citadel will just rug you. Great. So if we want these new systems that we're building to allow people to coordinate in new ways to actually work, we need to be able to have private coordination, right? And so a lot of the talks have been talking about various pieces of this. Um, for Penumbra, our strategy is, rather than trying to build something that is fully general right from the outset, let's try to start with one useful application. Because so far, we actually, I don't think, have really seen a private product that actually had product market fit. Um, and so our answer to that is Penumbra. So what is Penumbra? It's three things. First of all, we have a cross-chain, or we have a, a private proof of stake L1. Um, that acts as this cross-chain shielded pool. So we're IBC connected, and when someone moves funds into the zone, right, that's the privacy boundary. Their funds are shielded as they move in. And on top of that, what are they gonna do while they're there? It's not useful to just have a shielded pool. You need to have some reason for people to be there. And the reason is that it has a private DEX. So maybe the next question is like, why? Uh, well, so yeah, this is the, the overall picture of that. We have this like big transparent ecosystem. Hopefully there will be some more private pieces coming later. Um, and you can, you can move in and out over IBC. And, and once you're inside of Penumbra, all of the actions are, are private. So this question of like, why do private trading is something that, that we thought about a lot uh, while we started. And, and the thought process is basically that um, because every market is also a market in information, any kind of information leak is also a value leak, right? So when someone is doing a trade on Ethereum and they're being front run, I think it's actually a mistake to think of that as just being about like, oh, there's like, you know, front running or whatever. The fundamental problem is that the action that's, that that person is doing is pre-revealing their information. They're operating in a system where they have no way to control the disclosure of the information about their activity. And the fact that they're getting front run isn't actually fundamentally just a problem about, you know, consensus or Maybe we'll do some kind of commit and reveal system or, or whatever. Um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg on people leaking information and that causing them to, to lose value. As another example, right, if you're a market maker, you're trying to stay flat and maybe sometimes you'll make a mistake. If somebody can watch all of your trades and figure out, ah, I can predict the like 2% of the time that they're gonna do a mispricing, and then roll them over, then you know that you just lose. So the really interesting thing is that privacy in a trading context actually has this very quantifiable financial value. And so we can try to our, our strategy is let's see if we can bootstrap use that to bootstrap the creation of the genuinely private decentralized infrastructure that we want to have by using the fact that allowing people to control their information while they're in this financial market actually allows them to unlock much greater capital efficiency. So that's the like big, you know, thought. Um, the biggest challenge that we have to actually doing that though is the state model. Um, and the insight here is that every useful blockchain is gonna revolve around the private state, right? Like why do people want to use, you know, blockchain X over blockchain Y, right? It's because on that chain, there's some useful private state or public state that everybody is interacting with. 
Um, and so that means that we need to have some kind of private interaction with that public shared state. And that's really difficult because technologically, the way that you achieve privacy on a blockchain is that you take the execution, you move it off chain, and you have the transaction, instead of giving a you know, public description of here's what I'm doing, you have a uh, ZK proof that says this state transition was correct according to the rules of the chain. But that means that there's not really a way to interact with uh, the public shared state easily because how do you know, you know when you're making your state transition, if you're executing that off-chain, how do you know how that sits relative to everybody else's executions? Um, so our approach that we've kind of generalized out of this single solution for this single application is to try to build kind of an actor model for blockchains. So in this idea, rather than thinking that a transaction is actually going to do some execution on-chain, it's going to call a contract, we say, this transaction is going to pass a message to a contract. And each contract is going to execute once per block, and it's going to receive as input all of the messages that were sent to it in that block, and it can process them in a batch. In our case, where we're building a private DEX, we can batch together all the trades, do a single execution, and be done. But you could imagine this also working for other applications, like in an auction, right? Rather than thinking of, oh, well, what's the ordering within a block? You could have the contract sort the messages that it received by, say, you know, the bid price or something like that. And what this means is that the per-user state gets to execute asynchronously, off-chain, privately. People are submitting their like, snarks of their correct verifications of, uh, or the, the correct executions of, of their part of the state. And uh, as a side effect, you kind of like sort of solve a lot of the most egregious kinds of, of, of MEV that exist. Um, because you don't necessarily now have this idea of like, oh, there's, there's a, a concept of like ordering within a block. Uh, people are just having, you know, the, the chain is stepping through time. And the time resolution that it's possible to execute the contracts at is the same time resolution that is actually provided by the underlying consensus system. When you combine this with some kind of threshold encryption, you get a really cool, powerful, um, you know, sort of blind, like commit and reveal execution system. Um, all right, so as an example of, of how that sort of general picture works, here's the, the kind of rough idea of how we do batch swaps on Penumbra. Um, so, this part, in, in this slide, this is covering kind of the, the private per user state. So we start off with that user's private input into the batch. And they're going to encrypt that to a threshold key that's controlled by the validators. This dotted line is the kind of division between the private and, and public state, where below the line, that's all just on the end user device, and above it is on chain. Um, in order to record, what their participation was uh, in the same transaction that the user spends their input funds to contribute to the swap, they're also going to mint to themselves this private state NFT that's going to commit to all of the intermediate execution state of their participation. So that's you know, the trading pair, their inputs, um, you know, what, what address they're going to have the funds minted to, et cetera. Um, and they submit this transaction to the chain. As it's included in a block, the validators can batch up all of those encrypted inputs. We use a additively homomorphic threshold encryption. So the validators can then decrypt the sum of the, batch, the encrypted batch total without seeing any individual user's contribution. And now they have this public aggregate information, which they can execute against the public chain state to get some public outputs of here's the, the batch price, uh, and we'll commit that into the chain state, where it can then be used uh, together with this state NFT that records the, the intermediate um, execution state to allow that user to privately mint their pro rata share of the batch and prove in ZK that they're minting the correct amount. 
So that's, this is all the, the, the part of how do you mediate the interaction between the private per user state and the kind of aggregated public state. But the cool thing is that now we're doing only one DEX contract execution per block. So what could we do with that, right? And when we look at the public state, we actually have you know, many, many different trading pairs that people are going to be executing in the same block. When we batch all those together and get the encrypted in inputs and, and decrypt that, we get this global picture of here's what all of the trading intent was for this block. So rather than executing that you know, one at a time on individual pairs, well, we're only doing this once a block. Why don't we you know, go all in? and put all this into the, the big global liquidity graph and do global resolution of all of the trading intent in that block across the entire liquidity graph, right? So if, if maybe you want to trade asset A to B, but there's more liquidity between uh, A and C and C and B, perhaps the DEX decides, well, the optimal routing is actually that we, we do this multi-hop thing. Um, we can also have the chain arbitrage all of those prices on the graph to be consistent with each other so that after we put out these effective clearing prices that are going to be used by the, the, the swappers, um, the chain is just stepping in one, you know, from one block to the next between one set of consistent prices to the other with everybody getting their pro rata share of whatever the, the trade was. So this is actually like quite cool. And you get to do all of this computation because you know that you're only doing it once a block. So that's this you know, global picture. Hopefully that sounds cool. If you want to check it out, um, it is uh, running. Uh, and so if you follow any of these links, they'll take you to um, the docs of how to you know, play with our test nets and so on.